Welcome back, YouTube. This is Rich again, back for an exclusive YouTube video blog. Tonight's YouTube video blog is about why good old JR never had a payoff for any of the angles he, he was involved with, with former WWE owner Vince McMahon. Tell you why um, there was no payoff for or any in ring action that involved the four angles I'm going to talk about on this video blog and tell you why the opinions why it never happened. It should have happened, but those things happen. And I'll be back in one second. Don't forget to listen to Crystal's Time Machine each and every Friday and Saturday night from 9 to 11 p.m. on WCAP 980, where everybody gets it, can't get show live. Listen to the podcast exclusively on archive.org. Goes back to October 2015. Follow Crystal on Twitter at Crystal Amy John and Machine Crystal. Follow me on Instagram at Chris at Follow Crystal on Instagram at Crystal Johnson. Follow her on YouTube at Crystal Johnson. One exclusive video a week. And follow me on Twitter at Tree7 and follow me on Instagram. And now, back to the feature presentation. WWE Hall of Famer Jim Ross was involved in about four storylines with WWE owner Vince McMahon when he was with the, well, former WWE owner Vince McMahon while he was with the company. And all four of these angles he was in never resulted in um, him getting like a physical altercation with Vince McMahon at all in the storyline. And I'll tell you about the four ones that he was involved with. Um, in September 1996, Jim Ross um, turned heel on an episode of Monday Night Raw, um, blasting his um, being fired by the WWE um, a couple of times and calling Vince McMahon the egotistical owner of the World Wrestling Federation. That was probably one of the first times that Vince McMahon was acknowledged as the owner on WWE television, even though everybody knew he was uh, the owner, but he was played the television announcer. He was the play-by-play -play announcer for over 20 years um, up to that point. But everybody who was a wrestling fan knew he was the owner. And also, um, Jim Hunt, Jim Ross said, Mr. McMahon, when he did that, like firing his A, A, and that was uh, maybe a precursor to the Mr. McMahon character, which happened about 14 months later in um, the Montreal School job. So JR was probably could kind of predicting the future then when he said Mr. McMahon, but Nobody should know about the future because there could be consequences. Consequences could be disastrous. And Jim Ross brought in a fake Razor Ramon and fake Diesel, who was um, fake Razor Ramon was Rick Borgner, and the fake Diesel was Glenn Jacobs, who had a previous gimmick in WWE, Isaac Yankum DDS, which that flop, and the the fake Razor Ramon and fake Diesel flop big time. Rick Wagner was eventually released from the WWE, but um, Glenn Jacobs was repackaged as Kane, who became one of the most famous WWE superstars of all time. And, and even though Jim Ross was portrayed as, was as a heel, he actually got shared. I, this was eventually going to end up a match between Vince McMahon and Jerry the King, I mean, Vince McMahon and Jim Ross 
at WrestleMania 13 with control of the WWE at stake in storyline, and Jim Ross was going to win with like interference by, by the fake Razor and fake Diesel and other disgruntled WWE superstars helping Jim Ross. But uh, when the fake Razor Ramon and the fake Diesel flopped big time, the angle was still almost dropped. And, um, and Jim Ross eventually became a face again and kind of, like, sided with Vince McMahon. I, I did a video blog about that ten years ago with uh, some fantasy booking plan. It. It's in the archives. The second angle that Jim Ross was kind of involved with Vince McMahon was in March of 1999, um, in... December of 1998, Jim Ross um, suffered um, a second bout of Bell's palsy, which is facial paralysis. And, you know, sometimes facial paralysis via Bell's palsy affects your speech and um, you can't smile at all in pictures. So that was probably tough. For him, and he was taken off television a few months because of it. And Michael Cole um, replaced him on Raw and pay per view. That's the lead announcer for WWE. And this is about the time when Bach Gun won the brawl fall several months prior, and he was coming back to WWE. He was going to fight Butterbean um, in the book. In a boxing match at WrestleMania 15, and during an interview segment on Monday Night Raw, like Jim Ross slapped um, the hell out of Bot Gun, and Bot was going to try to attack him, but Doctor Death Steve Williams, you know, gave him a German suplex and knocked him out, and and like the next week on Raw, like. Jim Ross kicked Michael Cole during an interview segment um, in, uh, in Below the Belt. But then, like, Vince McMahon got, like, Terry Taylor to come out and do commentating because JR was going to do commentating with um, Jerry the King Lawler. And I think they stood the an continued the angle of Jim Ross calling Raw by himself. I heard there was a plan for this angle to be at WrestleMania 15, like Jim Ross against Vince McMahon with Jerry the King Lala. Um, if Jim Ross won, he would become the announce. He would um, become b back for on Raw and pay-per-views. If not, him and Dr. Death was going to get fired. And I heard, I think this was going to be when Steve Dr. Death Williams was going to turn on, like, Jim Ross, um, and, and attack, um, attack Jim Ross with the Oklahoma Stampede and become the new member of the corporation, and they were, I heard also they were going to also involve Jerry the King Lawler in this angle where he would be knocked out by Steve Dr. Death Williams as well, and he, he, he was a heel announcer, but that would have probably turned him you know, face Jerry Lawler, and this, I think, was supposed to be Dr. Death versus Stone Cold Steve Austin some in SummerSlam 1999, and I, and, but that did not happen at all, because Dr. Death was in no shape to wrestle, plus, this angle would have probably had Michael Cohen, probably they would have had a Jim Cornette, like, as the heel announcer, Raw and SmackDowns and pay-per-views, but this was the time um, he was getting ready to go to OVW, so they probably would have to make, it, uh, make another heel announcer, but thank God that didn't happen, but that would have been something. Also, an like another angle, like in November of 2001, Jim Ross um, kissed Vince McMahon's you-know-what joined the Kiss My You Know What Club, and this is when, like, he was being attacked by Kurt Angle, but The Undertaker, um, came in and tried to save Jim Ross, but 
Undertaker turned heel and he, you know, shoved Jim Ross's um, um, face into Vince McMahon's you-know-what, and Vince was wearing the cowboy hat, J.R.'s cowboy hat. I don't know uh, the Kiss My You-know-what club um, was not, not good at all, and there was no payoff for this with Jim Ross attacking Vince McMahon, and somebody told me that he was supposed to become, like, one of Mr. McMahon's stooges the next week on, like, Law shortly after. He get mad at Lawler, and, you know, he attacks Lawler, and then maybe joins Mr. McMahon. That would have been so funny if that happened, but it probably would have kind of been a spy angle where eventually he would turn back face and Stone Cold would give him a, give Vince McMahon a stunner. And I think the the fourth one um, was going to when um, Jim Ro Jim Ross got fired by Linda McMahon on television in October of 2005. Jim Ross was going for real life surgery on his colon because they thought it, um, he had a he had colon cancer, but actually he didn't. But he had to miss some time, and there was you know talk that. He was actually going to be replaced permanently by um, the UFC, former UFC fighter Mike Goldberg, who probably would have had to change his name because he had Bill Gold, um, Goldberg in the WWE, and this was like the ill-fated heel turn of Linda McMahon when she fired him. She Her, her acting skills were atrocious. And... Uh, and, um, she kicked Jim Ross below the belt. And I think a couple of weeks later, the segment to end Monday with Night Raw, Jim, I mean, Vince McMahon and, like, a, a nurse kind of had a big, like, um, big head ahead of JR. They pulled it out of, you know what? And it was just, you know, that was not good taste at all, and then there was a match going to happen at, like, Taboo Tuesday 2005, where Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to wrestle Jonathan Coachman, and if Coach, if Stone Cold won, um, J.R. would get his job back, but he, he was out several months. The plan was for Jonathan Coachman to beat Stone Cold Steve Austin with interference by Vincent Shane McMahon, and and Stone Cold said he wasn't going to do, uh, do a job for a non-wrestler like Jonathan Coachman. And who could blame him at all? I was, I was hoping that Stone Cold would beat Jonathan Coachman. And then a couple of weeks later, Vince, I mean, Jim Ross would like kick Vince in, in, in the you-know-what. But knowing, knowing that knowing that Vince would probably, probably throw Linda and to the wolves for Jim Ross, and he'll, 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 he'll be, he probably would have kicked her in a you-know-what, and I, but, 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 that probably would not get a good reaction at all. Probably, I don't know why they didn't have any payoffs between Jim Ross and Vince McMahon in the ring. Probably, um, JR's, you know, not a good wrestler, and probably... Um, Jim Ross, like, being Vince McMahon for a payoff, you know, that would get a very, very big pop, but maybe they probably, if that happened, probably they didn't, probably wouldn't, probably they would have, maybe, Vince McMahon would probably would have to respect Jim Ross, like, in the TV storyline, and he, he would have probably turned face Vince, which, you know, Vince is, is a... Was Mr. Miss, Mr. McMahon character was a great heel, but you know, turning him face and respecting Jim Ross, I just wouldn't think it wouldn't wouldn't be good at all. Oh, and it, you know, very disappointing. These angles never had a payoff, but it wasn't in the cards. That's about it on that. I'll be back later with another live video blog. I mean, uh, another exclusive YouTube video blog next week. Bye now.